I've been invited to the Golden State by Greg Fonts and Alex Renault, two expert spear fishermen, and their buddy George, the owner and captain of this boat. We're here to do some spear fishing off the Channel Islands, an archipelago that lies off the coast of Southern California. I'm joined by my good friend and meat eater producer, Giannis Putellis. Being his first time snorkeling, let alone spear fishing, he's got a lot to learn, starting with the equipment. With your, uh, your nose and face shape, that's probably, this one's probably better. Okay. What's wrong with this face? What's wrong with the way it's, 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 it's got a lot of character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that you quit drinking, his nose is it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's going back, it's going back down again. This is a gear intensive undertaking. Mask, snorkel, wetsuit, fins, weight belt, spear guns, flashers, buoys, and of course, boats. If you love gear, spear fishing is for you. Whenever I'm putting my wetsuit on, my wife describes it as an intense suit. I don't know, I've never asked her to explain what that means, but I got a feeling. How's it all fitting? Tight. One thing to know about wetsuits is that without a little inside information, putting them on can be a lesson in humility. I actually pulled a muscle in my shoulder once trying to get one of these things on, but with the addition of a healthy handful of hair conditioner, the chore becomes a little bit less of a pain in the ass. Oh, nice, you got your name <laughs> on yours. Where's yeah, the little, that's, where's that's, little chest pad? That's a super. Loading that's your loading your spear gun. That's yeah. a superhero feature, man. When you get your <laughs> the Steve. Steven. That's, that's not a very superhero name, though, <laughs> Steven. Oh no, Steven's coming. These guys are some of the best skin divers around, so we're spending the first few hours learning from them how to adjust to this environment. Alex and Greg give us a full rundown on how to properly equalize the pressure in our ears and sinuses and how to do what's called a breathe up in order to prepare our bodies for being underwater. Just want to breathe slowly, so inhale and then very slow exhale. What's the goal here? Uh, so basically it's, it's calming you down, it's slowing everything down. Once your mammalian dive reflex kicks in, it'll just kind of um, slow your heart rate down, basically. Everything about this is to be slow. So you can either just go and then you just want to just slow exhale. That's slow. That's slow. And how rigid are you about this? Like, let's say you like are on a long dive uh -huh. and you come up and you're like, <laughs> you're all tired out. But then all of a sudden, oh, there's another fish. You're supposed to do your recovery breathing first. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But all of a sudden, here's like the fish of a lifetime. Yeah. Are you telling me that you don't just go back down? Uh, if you're comfortable. Or are you like, no, I cannot go back down. I haven't, done, <laughs> I haven't taken my recovery. Do you want the book answer or do you want No, the answer? real world answer. Uh, it, you can go back down, but it depends on your comfort line. That, that is a chance of, if you don't do your proper recovery breathing, you can, you know, you can't just black out. You know, if you're coming up, that's not the only place you can black out. So once you hit the surface, if you do any sort of uh, breathing, when you even go, and then go back down, there's there's a higher percent chance of you also having an issue down. Or you could samba, doing that quick breath in and out on the surface. And let's say you, I mean, that's the extreme case, right? Samba is a form of black it's, it's a form of basically- It sounds peaceful as shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. The other point of this whole relaxation thing is that fish, I'm telling you, fish can tell when you're stressed out. It's just you give off a different vibe. You're going you're gonna to thrash around more. Mm -hmm. um, quick movements of your head instead of slow movements of your head. Jerky, gun extension, everything else. Having that slow, calm mentality is, it will, will go a long way. Go oh, as deep. <laughs> <laughs> you go hood, you go hood, then mask. Yeah. Strap outside of your hood. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you broke my mask. All right. you, bring it down. you got in our mask. Yeah. <laughs> I bought it online, man. Did you shave your upper lip this morning before you came out? No, is that smart? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you like me, that? Tell me yeah. what's going on. Man. I've learned enough already to make me happy. I did this. Just start. Just to get just the apparel, the, the gearing up part. Here we go. Good to go. go. Now you just like sit down and ease in, huh? Yep. To get acclimated, we're doing what's called line diving. Following a rope down and back, practicing our equalizing, also known as clearing. Full disclosure, this is not as easy as it sounds. I've done this a few times and I still find it challenging. 
Hold that big breath. Like a fish out of water, Giannis is a land mammal in water. Okay. Okay. And just sit on the step. Oh yeah. And those little tabs go between your teeth, yep. right? Yeah, you just bite. I'm ready? You're ready. Ease on in. <laughs> just make a little duck dive just like this so you'll be breathing take your deep breath take the snorkel out clear and then tuck the body down and pull those fins up so you get nice and firm. There's something overwhelming about the expanse and power of the ocean. It's an alien environment, one that seems to be at once both calming and terrifying. Due to the pressure changes as you ascend or descend in the water, clearing your ears is essential to keep you from blowing out an eardrum. You're down there for a while. <laughs> the lake I grew up on, the deepest place is 23 feet. <laughs> We used to go down there, and if you could get a hand in the cold muck, the cold muck of 23 feet, you were kicking ass. Cool. <laughs> well, good job. Yeah, that was good. There he is, fucking Aquaman. <laughs> so 120 carbon rail gun, 216 millimeter bands on it, or 5.8s. Uh, seven mil spear, double flopper. We're big into the double floppers nowadays. Yep. Give you a little extra grip and power. Show me what breaks away. So you're gonna run this to a float line, yep. to what's called a snake float. You can also run this to a larger float. So what happens is you pull the trigger, yep. your line release is tripped. So you just do that, right? Oh, that's what. So this breaks away. Oh, no, And your I got spear you. carries off with the float line. Now you realize I'm gonna have like zero chance of getting this reloaded Pretty properly. Much. I'll come your, find that's, you. That's your problem. I'll come yeah. find you. <laughs> there are a lot of different ways to rig a spear gun, but mostly we stick with a breakaway gun. One where the spear is attached to a long line, which is then connected to a buoy. After a shot, you swim back to the surface and, if everything goes right, your buoy and its line are attached to a fish. We're starting with what's called a blue water dive. We're dropped off from a tender boat, and then we just float along with the current. We use flashers for this. It looks like all hell's breaking loose. <laughs> Long strings of gaudy reflective lures and spoons meant to attract predatory game fish. We're gonna work a 50 to 70 foot contour line. The current will take us in and then push us out. And you're just laying there it's looking, kind of water. laying and, there waiting. And we'll throw some flashers and we'll have a surface flasher and it's a game of opportunity. In theory, we're targeting pelagic fish, one of which, the yellowtail, is a personal favorite of mine. You might know it from sushi restaurants where you'll often see hamachi kama on the menu. That's yellowtail collar. After getting going, we find ourselves in what seems like a never-ending cloud of tuna crabs. But without any signs of yellowtail, we shift gears and head in towards shallower water among the reefs and kelp beds. Kelp forests like this one are some of the most dynamic ecosystems on Earth, and they are mesmerizing. There's no other way to say it other than moving through this environment is a surreal experience and in a weird way very similar to hunting in a heavily timbered forest.
Considering his mastery of the sport, it's no surprise that Greg shoots the first fish of the trip. But Giannis and I remain hopeful since you never really know what you might come across out here when you peel the next kelp frond out of your way. along the ocean floor, in and out of the vegetation, we start to get the hang of this thing and put some fish on the stringers. Sheep's head, bonita, and calico bass. All of which we bleed out into the water to improve the flavor and the consistency of the flesh. But in a surprise turnaround, I also managed to shoot a yellowtail in the shallow water while the cameraman is off filming this beautiful ray. I said, boys, this is a good yellowtail spot. It was kind of like when you shit luck into something. <laughs> First, you got to admire the uh, chompers on these dudes. He's got one broken tooth. Attractive set of dental work. And these things uh, start out as females, and then the hermaphroditic, where they start out as females and then trant and then uh, switch over to a male. As they get older, this is spear caught, so he's got a nice little hole in them. One thing I do on these, I've noticed since I started messing with them, is I like to make this cut first because it gets confusing once you take a play off and come up on the spine. And then I do my other cut right now, too, for my other fillet just to get them started. I noticed that was like a little bit easier to do. So, with that taken care of. Pass through below the rib cage. Sheep's head fillet. Then I flip over and start my next one. This just has to do what handy are, so it's opposite if you're right handed. Start my next one where I come in along the rear of the dorsal fin and start my cut. Come up over the ribs, and then I go back down and slide in on the bottom side of the ribs and again, scrape that spine to the caudal fin. There it is, Sonny. Looking good. Gut shot. California Bonita, beautiful fish, fast. But don't, a lot of guys are down on them, right? Not down on them, but like. It's, if you were to take this fish and fillet it and put it in the freezer and pull it out, it will go mushy. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna prep it right now, toss it on some ingredients, and enjoy it right now. You know, I a uh, guy gave me one of these down in Baja one time, and I did just what you're saying, flayed it, froze it, then then it got kind of soft. Coming home, then yeah, I like it, broiled it, and it was I was not impressed. No. Yeah. No, it's it's not a good fish like that. Like that. I like it. We're gonna just cube it right like this. Oh, really? Look at those perfect little steaks. See how you can feel how, just feel the texture of that. Yeah. Right? You put that in a fridge and you let it rest, it just disintegrates. But that's what makes it so nice for a little sushi appetizer like this. So what's your little blend here? That is a lime soaked jalapeno. And in here we have some soy sauce and tapatio. What's the ratio on the soy tapatio? 50-50. Yeah, I need to get in here and have a nibble, man. It's got the eagle written all over it. Look at that. There you go, Yannis. Think about that. Huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Melts, man. It's like butter. Oh, it's good. Like melts. Like you can squish it with your tongue. It's, it just 
is so good. Wow, yeah. Just let it cool it's down. It's really something, man. Mm. It's like, it like dissolves, man, but not in a girl's way. It's, it's just so good. Wow, yeah. That's stuff, man. California, what a shithole, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no fun out here. <laughs> no fun to be had. There's no doubt spear fishing is a commitment, but that's no different than any other form of hunting or fishing. You want easy? Go to the grocery store. Because ultimately, the eating quality of these fish matches or even exceeds the amount of effort that we put into catching them. So much, in fact, that it makes me wonder what I've been doing chasing elk for the past 20 years. Maybe I should have been in the water.